Okay, I'm back. I apologize for that little intermission. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we need to set up some variables. We need to set up a lot of variables to make this work. So we're going to go into variable definitions, add. Just follow along with me. We're going to need to do h speed. We're going to need to do v speed underscore. I need one that says diag. I'm sorry, we'll actually do that in, in the code itself. What we need is max speed. We're going to set that to two for now. That's how fast we were moving. Original speed, set that to two. And we will actually be moving this later, but I'll get into that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We're going to do Excel. And this is actually going to equal max speed divided by four. And we're going to do friction is underscore, which is going to equal Excel. I'll explain it all when we get there. Actually, uh, H speed is going to be our horizontal speed. V speed is going to be our vertical speed. Max speed is how fast we could possibly move. That's going to be our maximum speed. Original speed, there is a point where we're going to change the max speed. And so we need to make sure it goes back to the original speed when we're done. Acceleration is how fast we start moving, and friction is how quickly we stop moving. Those are going to be one quarter of that. So basically, you'll be increasing by 0.5 pixels per step. So it'll take about four p steps to get up to max speed. It's not very much, but it adds just a little bit of give and take to starting and slowing down to make it feel like you're not just starting immediately moving and not moving it's it does it won't feel binary anymore it's barely noticeable you can actually change that and the more you change that the further away from the max speed you go the smaller this number becomes the the more slip slidey you get so if you actually change that way high it would feel like you're moving on ice i'm sorry if you change that to be very low it would feel like you're moving on ice and same with that one so right now it's actually you still have really tight controls it's just not quite instant stop and start so we're going to need to change some of these and create some. So we're going to have something called diag, h underscore move, and v underscore move. Each move is going to equal right minus left. V move is going to equal up minus down. Sorry, that's supposed to be down minus up. It is very important that you get these orders correct. And then diag is going to equal up and down, or, I'm sorry, I had that wrong. Up or down and left or right. Just to make sure that we have our order of operations correct, we're going to add some parentheses to that. Now, let's go over this. Why is this important? Well, whenever you move to the right, it's a positive x movement, and to the left, it's a negative x movement. Down is a positive y movement, and up is a negative y movement, right? Okay, so when h move equals right minus left, if this condition is true, it goes from 0 to 1. 0 represents false, and 1 represents true. So right minus left. If you're holding down right, then it becomes 1 minus 0, because this is not true. This is true. This is not. So 1 minus 0 is 1. If you're holding down either both left and right, or neither one, they're both false. So that becomes 0. And if you're holding down left, this becomes false, and this becomes true. So 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. We're going to multiply our speed by each move. So when you find out if this is negative 1, 0, or positive 1, we're going to multiply our speed by it. That way, it makes us go left or right. Same with V move, down and up. So let's get to the movement region. We're going to say if each move does not equal 0. So an exclamation mark means not. And just how we did plus equals or minus equals, this is not equals. H move does not equal zero, which means we're moving either left or right. H speed equals 
plus equals each move times Excel. Right? Yeah, I've got my variables lined up correctly. It took a minute for it to change color. Blue means it's a variable. Uh, this is an instance variable. This is a local variable. I might have that backwards. I'll get back to you. But either way, it's color coded. And if it was just gray, then it means that it wasn't accepting it as a variable. But I just had to give it a minute to think. Okay. And then we're going to say h speed equals clamp. And what does clamp do again? Remember, it takes a value and it locks it in to a minimum and maximum. So the value that we're locking in is h speed, which is how fast we're moving horizontally. And the minimum amount is max speed. And the maximum amount, positive max speed. Negative max speed, positive max speed. Okay? So if h move does not equal zero, which means it's either negative one or positive one, h speed plus equals, it gains this much every step, h move times acceleration, acceleration equals 0.5 right now. So every step, your h speed, your horizontal speed is increasing by 0.5 pixels per step. It is going to lock it in, our h speed, to a negative max speed, which means you're moving to the left, to a positive max speed, moving right. Else, this is another part of our condition. By saying if each move does not equal zero, else means that it does equal zero. So this is the what we do in case it does equal zero. H speed equals lerp. This is going to be H speed zero friction. And if it's green, it's a built-in function that we're not using right now. So that's why the underscore is at the end. And what does lerp mean? That's a funny word. H speed equals lerp. This is linear interpolation. And if we middle click on it, it'll take us to the explanation for lerp. With this function, you can find the value that equates to the position between two other values of a given percentage. So if you do, for example, lerp 0, 10 by 0.5, you'd return the value of 5, which is 50% of the input values. You can extrapolate using this function too by supplying a positive or negative value to the interpolation amount that is doing something like you know what this is making it more confusing basically lerp takes a value it takes one value and makes it become the second value by the the amount of the third value so we're taking our current speed which is h speed and we want to reduce it down to zero or increase it up to zero if it's already negative but it's we're basically going to go from h speed however fast we're moving horizontally to zero by this amount friction and then we want to do the same for vertical movement right if v move does not equal zero v speed plus equals v move times excel v speed equals clamp v speed negative max speed max speed else v speed equals lerp v speed zero friction okay and you'll notice i don't do a lot of copy and pasting you can do that but sometimes you miss mistakes and also i'm really a uh, strong proponent of forming muscle memory you want to get all this stuff it helps you it just I think I believe that it helps you become better at typing and this stuff becomes cemented in your brain a little better when you have to type it out each time. So let's see what happens. I can't move at all. I can still shoot, but I can't move. So what happened? Well, each speed it says my horizontal speed is supposed to move by the acceleration amount, except that I didn't set the condition that our x amount has to change by that and our y amount has to be increased by that amount as well so try that again okay now we move exactly as we did before and diagonal is still faster it's kind of weird except that we didn't do anything about diagonal so basically, I made this way more complicated than it was, but it's actually a very clever 
cleverly written code. I'm not taking credit for it. I didn't come up with that. I've watched a million tutorials and seen other people do this. And that's where I learned it. But we do need to account for diagonal speed. We're going to say diag speed. We're just going to make that variable on the spot. It's going to equal square root max speed divided by 2. And then we have to say if diag h speed times equals, just like you did plus equals and minus equal, you can also do times equals diag speed because we've established that diagonal speed is the square root of max speed divided by 2. Now I'm not good at math. I don't fully understand what that's saying, but I know that it works. D speed times equals diag speed else. So else means this this code happens if your if diagonal is true. If it's not true, max speed equals original speed. Because we are permanently changing what max speed is when you go diagonal. So when you're not going diagonally, you have to change max speed back to its original speed, otherwise you slow down significantly. So, try that out. There we go. Much better. Now you're moving diagonally in a much more realistic, much more realistic speed. Instead of zipping around faster going diagonally than you are going straight. There you go. That's how you fix the little diagonal conundrum that we had. Then you can spend this time blowing up bad guys. All right. We'll pick up in the next lesson. Thanks. Bye.